Yes, I'm David. Okay. I'm tasked to say a few words about plant tissue culture in fairly general terms. I'm happy to do that here. Okay? Um, I think we can't overemphasize enough about the relationship between genetic improvement research and vegetative plant propagation. You see, the, many of the talks before me were all about, you know, breeding plants, looking for these attributes, frost resistance, uh, better wood quality, better durability. Okay. So from genetic research program, we're going to have a lot of uh, many few individuals, contradictory, right? Many few individuals from each of these with desirable attributes. Few individuals with desirable in individuals cannot make an industry, all right? To make an industry based on genetically improved trees, eucalypts that we are interested in, we need to mass cloning those selected eucalypts. There is a really close relationship between, between genetic improvement research program, whatever we're interested in, insect pest resistance, whatever. And, and we really need to think about vegetative propagation uh, technologies. And, and plant tissue culture is part, is another form of vegetative plant propagation. Whatever vegetative propagation methods the industry design to, to use, it's really important that at the end of the day, the industry has many, many copies of the same thing from the genetic improvement research program. We're talking about true to type public groups from whatever vegetative propagation programs, right? I think it's no point for me to talk about those really common vegetative propagation uh, practices, which are really common in for forestry and agriculture in, in our primary <coughs> industries. Okay, today I want to just say a few words about propagating in a lab, in a plant tissue culture lab. So, in the primary industries, when you're talking about vegetative propagation, you're talking about propagation of other operations in some outdoor facilities, in some nurseries and glasshouses. Now, in a plant tissue culture lab, what we're talking about is taking a small cutting, stem cutting, about two, one to two centimeter long. And to be successful in any uh, vegetative propagation in a lab, using plant tissue culture technique, you need to think about all the goodies, the life supporting system, the medium. You don't see any soil particles, all right? And, and you put the cuttings there, right? So very often, because the size of the cutting used for propagating inside the lab, this sort of technique we call micropropagation. And you see that all the a majority of the propagation manipulations in a plant tissue culture lab takes place with an environment. You can't see any insect pests, no pathogens around. The public use produced from this sort of propagating units, they are likely to be free of pathogens, free of those larvae of insect pests and so on. Now, more importantly, the whole propagating systems, all the operations, because it's going on under the environment, free of stress, free of uh, these pathogens and so on, and, and, and because we can manipulate what we put in this medium here. So to me, the value of propagating plants in a laboratory is this. Very, from time to time, some of the genotypes, some of the plant material that you would like to propagate, 
using traditional methods outdoor, sometimes you might run into trouble. They, they just simply don't, they're, they're very difficult to propagate. Now, that's the time we can move some of the cuttings in the lab because here we have a great opportunities. We have more tricks up to our arms, <laughs> so to speak, because under such an environment, we can do all sorts of things to, 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 to help to break through in, in propagating some of the more difficult to propagate materials. Right? So to me, uh, an industry in, intending to use genetically improved materials, I think uh, investing in plant tissue culture technique is just a way to risk proof the industry. Right? It's no point to, to do propagating things and without paying attention to tissue culture techniques, and suddenly you can do bottleneck. Ah, you want a million copies of that, but we couldn't do it. And you, you try to look around, try to propagate it. All right? Now, we want to risk proof the industry by looking at other options like the plant tissue culture technique. That, to me, that will be a very important part of that strategy to save proof, to, to risk proof the industry. At the, uh, my involvement actually uh, with the uh, propagating efforts of NSDFI started uh, at the end of uh, 2015. I w attended a workshop, a propagation workshop of the NSDFI, and I heard that, I heard that there is no tissue culture method, no, no way, no published method on. Or, or no one has ever done successfully done any uh, micropropagation of the eucalypts that are of interest to the NZDFI. And I, I heard that. So in 2016, I started to, to play with some of the tissue culture methods. Okay? It's one thing, it's obvious, a lot of papers published on eucalyptus in the literature. But look again, is it that easy to pick up a paper and try to do it in a lab? No. Okay, there is no, there was no method to micropropagate some of the eucalypts of interest to the NZDFI. And so I was uh, I'm very delighted that uh, uh, Sharp, uh, the proceed, gave me some material to play with. So I started in 2016. Yes. Look at this. This is about one centimeter long cutting from Eucalyptus Botswana. I designed the medium and I was able to observe first visible signs of shoot bud development. And this is the most critical step in micropropagation of any plant species. Okay, what? And I was interested in to see, okay, now we can, we know how to induce bud development. Will the newly developed bud keep on growing? The answer is yes, within two weeks you see really positive signs of further shoot development. Now, at this point, it's important to have some kind of conclusion that we have, we, at least we have done two things right. One, as you can see that, we, we manage to, to have an environment free of pathogens, free of pests and so on. This is number one requirement as well, to be able to establish a successful <coughs> tissue culture process. Number two, we now have <coughs> some basic clues as to what is required to, to, to induce shoot bud development and to be able to sustain, to have all the goodies that can sustain further shoot 
but development and the tissue culture conditions. So what's next? Well, having achieved two basic things, I got a little bit, little bit, uh, little bit, little bit, little bit ambitious. Try more experiments. What's next? In the same position of this stem cutting, I don't know whether you can see from the back, we see a cluster of multiple ship suit development. Yeah. So we from a basic understanding of what is required for the for tissue culturing of the new clips of the uh, of interest to NZDFI. So we, we, we do more we did more experiment and induce, we were able to induce multiple ship blood development in one position. What's next? What's next is this? From this two centimeter long, about two centimeter long stem cutting under tissue culture conditions, with the with the, with the, with the, with the, with the goodies we design, the environment we design, you can see that multiple ship blood developments at multiple locations on one single stem cutting. Yeah, it was so much fun. Okay. And we were able to observe that. We were able to do that in the first place. Nowhere else in the world can do that. Does it really fun in doing science? Right? Good. So, uh, yes, tell you what, the tedious part is this. You can pick out each of the shoot individually and root them. After we root them, in theory, then we can move on. We can move the rooted shoot beyond the micropropagation phase back to the, the field. Now, I want to take a couple minutes to explain to you something else. Okay, before we root them, there's something else we can do. And I want to explain to you right now. See what you think. Okay, let's do the number game. Let's play the number game, okay? Let's start with very simple math. Math 101. Let's say we can only do, take one shoot cutting. So take a shoot cutting from the front, move back to the, move to the left, and we can induce multiple shoot formation and multiple locations in that single shoot cutting. We, we can do that, All right? Now we don't stop there. That's the game I want to play, all right? So, what is next? This for argument's sake. For, we don't need to have one shoot cutting, and we only manage to, to have 20, to make it less simple. We only have 20 new shoot development, all right? Well, those new shoot development, that when they're big enough, within four to six weeks, then we can individually culture them up. Each to the new shoot cutting, just for argument's sake, we'll go on to produce another 20 new shoot cuttings. <coughs> so about eight weeks' time, we get 400 shoot cuttings from something we start with one shoot cutting. Now, what's next? If we don't stop there, it is a cycling propagation round. And each round you see explosive multiplication. All right? Okay, at some point of this game, I lost track. <laughs> okay. Okay, at some point of this game, some of them can be moved to the rooting phase and then move beyond the micropropagation. Remember, all this public use from, 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 from inducing, uh, from the shoot cuttings, they are induced, they are formed, they are developed under really high health conditions. No, no chance for any 
insect larvae there, or pathogens. All right. Now, I want to turn my attention to why I keep on saying the industry. It is the minimum requirement, isn't it? You want to clone something. Whatever you clone the propagules are the same as what you start with. All right, true to type. How come I'm so confident? How come I am confident that, that these multiple shoots induced in these stem cuttings will give me true to type propagules? How come? It's based on sound cell biology. Based on biology, really. Because look at the positions at which multiple shoots were induced. At each of the, these locations, actually, you look deep inside, you find a group of cells. Each of these locations that we are able to induce cuttings, we see something like stem cells. Yeah, plant cells, stem cells. These are more genetically most stable cells. All the shoots we see are the, are the products of these stem cells in the plant body. They're most genetically stable cells. So I'm confident the cuttings will be true to type. Okay, you don't believe me? In this DNA, we are in the DNA era. So we are seeking DNA fingerprinting evidence. So I'm going to two examples to, to tell you the power of DNA fingerprinting. All right? Now, uh, Using some of the DNA fingerprintings, you can see that this is the in this in, in, this is the pattern of the DNA fingerprints, the barcode of that plant material we want to clone. And these are the DNA fingerprints of those propagules from that plant we want to clone. Do you see any difference in the fingerprints? All identical. So we are seeking, even in the tissue culture world, we are seeking molecular evidence that, yes, if they're true to type, they should have the same DNA fingerprints. Now, DNA fingerprinting is really powerful because here I deliberately say an example. Uh, if you obtain plants from uh, cells like callus. Callus tissue is, is not stem cell. It does not contain stem cell. But you can make callus tissue to reprogram them to become somatic embryos or to, to become the noble organs. Okay? But with, by regenerating plants from, uh, from non stem uh, stem cell type of tissues, there is a higher chance of getting genetic variation in the propagules. For example, I delivered just like this example. <coughs> this is the DNA fingerprints of the starting material. From there, somatic embryo was induced on the leaf of this plant. And that is the DNA fingerprint of that somatic embryo induced on the leaf of this plant. You can see that they have different fingerprints. So some of the plants regenerated from the non-stem cells, they have higher chance of showing up genetic variation. <coughs> so in conclusion, personally, I, I, I think that I w w it's important to, uh, to look at all the tools, tissue culture tools, as well as the DNA fingerprintings in to, 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 to advance this, uh, the value that we have gained from all the different uh, genetic uh, improvement research programs. Thank you very much.